Hello there. Good morning to you. This is Kakaki Social. I'm on no show Rena Obozeke. Welcome to Midweek. Now, Lagosians, are you aware that Nigeria's first son, as his fans call him, that's Sheyi Tinubu, might just be your very next governor? Well, now you've heard. Well, this is because he's been handpicked by the coalition of Nigerian youth leaders who thinks he's the very perfect match, the very representation of Nigerian youths. And based on his father's antecedents that are incredible, he's learned so much to lead Lagos. Well, here is what key position holders of that group are saying about him. Two paragraphs. First to be that... If we could see, um, yeah, thank you. It says Nigerian youth came to this conclusion because Lagos State has been a home for all Nigerians and who becomes the governor of the state is pivotal given the role the state has played since the inception of the country. And then he continues, he says Sheyi Tinubu is gifted, Sheyi Tinubu is qualified, Sheyi Tinubu is experienced, well-read and capable to lead Lagos State to the promised land come 2027. <laughs> oh, she so Malik He's saying that since his dad practically built Lagos from scratch, it only makes sense we compensate his son with the governorship. Also, Ogochuku says, Ogechuku says, supported Lagos is Tinubu's family business. After Sheyi, Sheyi's son will be warming up. Also, in reaction to this, this user says the groundwork is already in place for his accession. He says, did you see how they crafted the propaganda? But while well, concerning this is really sponsored by Sheyi Tinubu, is Obafemi Awolowo, who is sitting as Talk Spot Nigeria. And he says, if Sheyi Tinubu is actually behind this scheme, then he's too dull to step into his father's shoes. Only a coward hides behind his father's achievement in pursuit of his ambition, because he will always be in his shadows. He lacks political dexterity to manage Tinubu's empire. Wow. So all of them, they are agreeing that Lagos is legit Tinubu's empire right there. But we'll move to other story and see who becomes the next Lagos state governor. Well, on Tuesday, the Senate held a valedictory session in honor of their late colleague, Ifai Uba, who died in July at age 52 in a London hospital. Well, the family, primarily the wife and children, were of course present. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Okay, there is this highlight for netizens from the event. It is Brownu South Senator Ali Udume asking the lawmakers to support the widow of Ifa Yuba by making her replace her husband as a senator representing Anambra South Senatorial District. What I want to appeal to you, Mr. President, is let us keep the spirit aspirations of Ifaini alive. How it has happened before. Finally, my appeal, Mr. President, to you and my distinguished colleagues. His wife, fortunately, is 50 years or so, a wonderful wife. Let us support the family and have the spirit representative of Ifaini here in the chamber when the election for the Anambra senatorial district that he represents comes over. Thank you very much. May his soul rest in peace. All right, let's see some thought from netizens right now. So um, this user, Tunde, is saying that this man's way of reasoning needs to be checked. A senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Bobby Anna, says, I found this commendable. Oh, yeah, now let's clap for him. Okay, for demo, he says, Senator Ndume, now, wow, is that even legal? Has our Senate become a family inheritance? He shouldn't disrespect the deceased and their family like this. May the deceased find peace after life and his family fortitude to live with the loss. Amen. And then Frederick is saying that, yes, it can be made legal. The party can make the wife a consensus candidate, then mobilize constituent to vote for her largely out of pity or sympathy. I'm against it, but it can be done. Well, just to say that we do not have enough time to take all the um, instances that he married together to say, oh, this is legit thing to do, including how Senator Remy Tinubu made it to um, the Red house right there replacing her husband. 
Well, a Nigerian Army Major General and other soldiers have been captured in a video assaulting a couple for overtaking the soldier's vehicle. Well, the Nigerian Army has ordered investigation into this matter because they say the events leading to the assault are not clear yet. How did I pass your car? How did I pass your car? How did I pass your car? Oh, God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, no. 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 Jesus. Jesus! 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 Well, another sorry state we look forward to the result of that investigation. This user is reacting. He's saying that this is the Nigerian army. They are super strong when it comes to brutalizing civilians. But I dare them to do the same to the terrorists and bandits that are currently in control of a large part of Nigerian land. Um, Khan says the motivation behind many Nigerians joining the military is to oppress citizens. That's all. More thought would be from Stephen who says, as all those clamoring for military intervention in Nigeria, here is the answer. Behold your military leadership who are not even in charge and yet filled embodiment, embodied to assault civilians with impunity. It says, wait until when they are in charge, you will wish for the worst democratic leadership. I mean, I don't know, but we really want to see how that happens because how can it be a problem because someone overtook if you will not drive fast maybe somebody will pass now okay well reactions are trailing the renewed hope estate going for not less than eight million naira for a one bedroom apartment well that's for those funded by the federal government the houses developed through public private partnerships that's ppp they are called renewed Hope cities. They are up for 22 million era for a one bedroom apartment. So, the Housing and Urban Development Minister Musa Dangewa is proposing a minimum of 500 billion era to be allocated to housing, starting with the 2025 budget to address housing deficit in Nigeria. He actually said that 5.5 trillion naira is what the sector should adequately get every year so that the issues with housing in Nigeria can be adequately addressed. Um, Sam is saying that this is renewed shege. Few years back, this house are called low-cost housing to alleviate the poor who are not able to strive with the rich in the society. But that narration has changed. It's now the government of the rich for the rich when we are ready. Okay, uh, Mukhtar Saliu says, nine million naira for one bedroom apartment and you called it renewed hope. May you wanted, um, say maybe you wanted to say renewed hopelessness. And he says, where is hope in buying one bedroom apartment for nine million naira? Well, Dubai Off Plan is saying that that's less than 8K dollars to own an apartment. He says, it's a, it's a good price, please. But then Sunny, in response to him, is saying that the average Nigerian earns less than 1K dollars a year. And I think that many people are average Nigerians who earn really... Oh! <laughs>